Hello. Well, as regular viewers will know, I'm primarily concerned with audio and video technology, but I do sometimes do some things to do with other aspects of electronics, and so it is today. Uh, this is a power supply for an HP laptop, uh, and it belongs to my son, and I've got a similar laptop of a similar age, uh, which has almost the same power supply, but is a half a volt greater voltage. Now this one, we had a problem that it became all unreliable, you'd plug it in and have to keep wiggling it and jiggling it to get it to power the laptop. And you could blame the laptop power socket, but that wasn't the case because my power supply, albeit an extra half a volt, worked the laptop just fine. And we've been using it for several weeks that way. But I have now got a replacement cable. So this is the DC connector, which I need to fit into there. Now, the thing about these DC power jacks is you assume, you know, it's got ground and supply, and that's it. But there's clearly more to it, because there are three wires on the end. That's a surprise. But what's going on here, if you look at the jack, is you've got the inner conductor and a pin down... Sorry, the outer conductor here and an inner pin, but also an inner sleeve. So... If I, for example, with this one, get my power, my multimeter set up just on ohms, we'll have a look at what we meter on here. So we get a certain uh, resistance reading to the center pin. That's reading, what, 300 odd K. But if we go to the sleeve on the inside, we get a different reading, there's about 2.2K. So they are different. And like I said, this works when it feels like it. It could, of course, be that this just need good clean, but we didn't think we'd ever get that reliable. So rather than mucking about with that, we've got ourselves a whole new cable. Now, it's gonna be a little bit non-trivial to install because this does not appear to be a screwed construction unless I can feel a screw in there somewhere. I don't think so. I think we're going to have to pry it apart. So that's going to be uh, just a whole heap of laughs, isn't it? Try not to do any damage to it. Okay, let's get stuck in. Right, let's try to take this apart. I have a spudger. Okay, I think I've managed to find out that this part is the one I need to pull away. The part away from the label. I need to go in at that angle. Cool, oh, stubborn. I bent my spudger. I find usually if you have to revert to using a screwdriver, it's best to go for the biggest screwdriver you can get away with to do as little damage as possible. Oh, that's too big there. Heavy going. You know, an alternative might be to cut this wire and fit this one to it. Don't really want to do that though. I do see that the replacement wire is quite a lot shorter. Quite a lot shorter. Must be half a metre shorter than the original. That's going to be inconvenient. So maybe that is the right way to go. If I really can't break into this thing. Well, it would do no harm to go down here somewhere well away from where the damage was on the plug. And see if we can see the three connectors in there. Three conductors. <clears throat> oh. They're coaxial.
That's interesting. It's a completely different design of cable. Now I'm guessing that this will be the outermost ring, that the next one will be the inside ring and then the inside one will be the pin. I mean, you wouldn't build it any other way, would you? Let's check that with the meter. So, doing the same sort of thing on the remains of the old conductor. Right, assuming we can make reliable contact, because of course the whole point of this is that this plug is not working properly. This is the outermost. This is the inside ring then. And then this is the centre conductor. Right, that's as you'd expect. Then looking at our replacement, which clearly isn't the same sort of quality. I'm guessing that the outer conductor is probably black. Good guess. That the next one in, don't know. Brown. And then the pin must be white. So what we'd have to do is join those together, but they're fundamentally incompatible cables. With the white going to the white, the brown going to that one, and the black going to this one. I guess with enough heat shrink it could be done. Can I pull this off? Or am I going to have to cut it off? If I cut it off, then I really have committed myself to not installing it in the uh, power supply. No, so I'm going to have to cut that off, which is not great. These two conductors seem to have a decent amount of um, copper in them. This one looks very thin. I wonder if that's a sense line. Well, it's the thinnest one on, on the original as well, so I'm assuming that must be a sense line and these are the power. Okay, that's all the conductors done. Uh, I think I'll just do a quick metering check to make sure that everything looks sensible before I put the final outer heat shrink on. One more quick sanity check because errors here would be cataclysmic. At this point I think I wish I'd used a wider heat shrink to go over the whole join because it's struggling. Well, I got it on there. It says that this is 125 Celsius. So let's set my heat gun to 125 Celsius. So my hope now is that not only does it work, but that that join is um, teenager proof. <laughs> we'll see. So uh, first thing we need to do is try it out. All right, here's the uh, laptop charging port. Um, we now have the power supply. Uh, I'm going to plug in a power cable. It's on a isolated power supply because I'm a bit overcautious like that. 
Um, I'll switch it on in just a second. First, I will plug this in. So the port lights up on this particular unit. So, can you remember? Is it this socket? Is it this light here that lights up, for Alex? Uh, that one there next to the yeah. looks like it. Right. So we switch the power supply on. And it's lit up. It took a few seconds to light up. Let's wiggle it and jiggle it. That's looking good, isn't it? So it takes a few seconds to light up. It's got a bit of slack in it, but I think that's intended. We've fixed it. Yep, it's reliable. So, Alex, what I've done, I didn't take the old cable out because I couldn't take this power supply apart. So what we did was um, added it. And that gives you a slightly longer cable as well as an extra measure. So, because I'm sure you like a longer cable on the power supply. So there's the charging light working reliably. There's the mains adapter. And where's the join? There's the join. You need to be reasonably careful with that. Okay, teenager? I'll try not to wreck it, Dad. Right, okay. Well, I hope you've uh, gained something from this. Uh, do please remember to like, share, and especially subscribe, and I'll do more content on especially audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.